Right now, feminist activists in China fighting against sexual harassment and inequality operate, as you might imagine, in a culture of censorship. Protest and free speech is limited. And this helps to explain why the Me Too movement has been slower to make an impact. But over the past year, it has grown in prominence with a string of stories and accusations that have emerged from arenas as diverse as temples, universities and television talk shows. So we wanted to ask, how does China deal with gender activism? And we found the per perfect person to talk about it, uh, journalist Leita Hong Fincher. Her new book is Betraying Big Brother, The Feminist Awakening in China, arguing that the women's rights movement does pose a unique challenge to the Chinese regime. And uh, there are some notable uh, cases and cause celebrities, I suppose, later, like the, 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 the Feminist Five. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, um, the Feminist Five were uh, a group of five young women who were arrested in 2015. And they were merely planning to celebrate International Women's Day by planning out uh, to hand out anti-sexual harassment stickers on subways and buses. But before they even handed out the stickers, Chinese police carried out a really sweeping round of arrests in multiple cities. And they ended up focusing on these five young women and bringing them all to Beijing where they were jailed for 37 days um, and then released after a really unprecedented global outcry. And you've been living in China and Hong Kong until very recently and we were just saying, I mean, it's not just about five. You think there may be hundreds of feminist activists? Well, at this point, I really think we're talking about the thousands, okay. actually. Um, I mean, it began as a very small group of uh, of a few hundred, I would say, for several years leading up to 2015. And, and the Chinese authorities thought that by jailing five young women, they would be able to crush uh, a potentially large-scale feminist movement. But in fact, it had the opposite effect. It really galvanized the feminist community inside China. And ever since then, there are more and more young women all across China who really are attracted by the idea of feminism. And I, I mean, we've seen, for example, protests uh, in support of gay marriage or, or against domestic violence. Uh, we've, we've seen examples of this on the streets. But at the same time, aren't women being told, well, you're now free to have more children. You know, you're free to, to add more to Chinese society in that approved way. Yeah, well, I wouldn't really call that freedom. It's being framed as freedom because the Chinese government for over 35 years had the so-called one-child policy. Now it's doing the reverse, and it's actually trying to convince women to have more babies. So you see a lot of aggressive propaganda telling particularly young, educated women that they have to get married and have ch children before they turn 30. Um, and so there's a, there's a coercive element to that that I fear may become even more coercive And are you seeing time. resistance to that specific message? Well, absolutely. I mean, first of all, if you look at the statistics, the birth rate fell last year in spite of China's new official two-child policy. And um, more and more women don't want to get married. They don't even want to have one child, let alone two. And we're talking about perhaps a, a, a new wave of activism, but it kind of links in, doesn't it, to the fact that uh, women in factories, for example, in labor uh, movements, have always been encouraged to be active. Yeah. Well, the thing is that women are increasingly on the forefront of labor activists, um, or, or labor unrest, I should say. Um, and women are, are the majority of the, the workers in these manufacturing factories. Um, but the feminist activists in, in particular have gotten increasingly involved in labor rights as well. And so there's a fusing, there, there's a, there a crossing of class boundaries between elite middle class women who are feminist and then working class women as well. That's a really interesting overview. We have to end it there, but later Hong Fincher, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.